All right, let's stay with us now and speak to international news editor Sophie Mukwena. Sophie, of course, before we even get into developments around Mozambique, let's start with the story that we've just seen now. The Deputy Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Tandi Muraka, will be leading that delegation there later this week to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Let's talk about the significance of the Commonwealth in 2024. Well, I think many people are saying that Commonwealth must transform and the candidate for SADC, Joshua CDP, says indeed it must do that because when you look at the discussions right now in relation to the global uh, leader, that is the, the United Nations, there are calls for the UN to transform, particularly the Security Council. And therefore he says that uh, there's nothing wrong if people are challenging the Commonwealth to do things differently. As you had in that package, you have uh, people who are questioning the role of uh, the king and that uh, as head of, of state, but ceremonial in the United Kingdom. Why is he head of state of the Commonwealth if it's about these countries? And therefore, I think that uh, debate will continue, but uh, the Commonwealth can still play an important role because we have these powerful nations and not so powerful nations where they come together and talk about issues that are affecting them. And there's no way they can ignore global uh, challenges and also on the margins of this summit you can have countries discussing the current challenges facing the globe and unfortunately south africa has uh, sent the deputy minister i'm told that uh, when voting comes on friday when countries will be voting for the secretary general of the commonwealth only full ministers vice president or deputy president or the president can cast the ballot and therefore uh, maybe this will be resolved but it looks like south africa won't be able to cast the ballot for the secretary general of the commonwealth which will be a setback because you really need all those votes particularly as you know that uh, other countries in the West have also put up candidates, Ghana and Gambia, and people are saying, but West Africa did have its chance when it was Chief Imeka Anyawuku. And this time around, it's time for the Southern region, because as you pointed out, it's a rotational basis, and therefore it's the time for Africa, but Africa is not united. And it's going to be interesting to see how that one unfolds, particularly on the South African front. But there's also, of course, as you spoke about challenges, um, tensions continue to simmer in Mozambique with protesters um, and, of course, opposition you know, leaders claiming electoral fraud, as we saw earlier on, saying that they're going to be p putting on the pressure. Indications, of course, are suggesting that the, you know, the governing party has won. What's the latest? Well, those were the reports since last week, and unfortunately it is when the opposition took a decision this weekend, making an announcement of a stay away, and also protests on Monday. We saw Maputo was deserted, but later people tried to gather, but uh, the security was there, and when the leader of the opposition uh, was engaging the media, that's when the police opened, uh, uh, the, it's not uh, life ammunition, we are told it was uh, uh, some uh, way to stop that meeting and also to ask people to dispatch and therefore unfortunately when you look at those visuals they are quite uh, uh, disturbing and mm. I think they are now all over the world and therefore this has put pressure particularly on SADC. You know that the current chair of SADC at the heads of state and government level is uh, Zimbabwe and you had reports, weekend allegations around some individuals from Zimbabwe uh, in trying to interfere in the elections of Mozambique. This has not been something that has been proven but when those kinds of uh, allegations are making the rounds, you will have a problem. On the other hand, we have Tanzania, that is the current chair of the organ on politics and defense, that is supposed to look at this issue, no word from the organ in terms of SADC. And remember, the organ on politics and defense, the president of Tanzania has deployed the 
people who are observing those elections and all this uh, tension, no wait from SADC. We only had uh, the African Union and also later this afternoon, early morning in the United States of America, the UN Secretary General who is currently in Addis Ababa meeting between the AU and the UN issuing a statement calling for calm. And speaking of meetings, the 16th annual BRIC summit will be held this week in Russia. And this comes amid some serious tensions. You look at the war in Ukraine, what's happening in the Middle East, a number of geopolitical developments. And when you look at this summit, yes, they are talking about cooperation. They're talking about trying to strengthen relations. But no doubt what is also taking place on the sidelines, as we've mentioned, is likely to also possibly dominate talks. When you look at President Putin's uh, program for this summit, we are told that he is going to meet majority of uh, the leaders who will be in Russia for this summit. And I think uh, it's more than... 20 countries that will be represented, those who are members, those who are admitted recently, and those who are aspiring to be the BRICS member countries. So when you look at that kind of a program, it tells you that it's massive. You look at the visuals coming from Russia, uh, quite a serious uh, preparation for this, massive. And you know, uh, Putin can really put a show. And he is going to use this to send a message to the West in particular that uh, I am not isolated, I have friends. I'm still in charge here, but also I have a voice globally. And therefore, I think it's going to be interesting. You can see already international media is focusing on BRICS. And BRICS is drowning the Commonwealth because these two summits are happening in the same week. And even when you look at the president of South Africa, he's going to the BRICS summit. You know that uh, he was the chair, outgoing chair, and the current chair is going to be President Putin. And therefore, you can see the focus is on BRICS. And I think even heads of state and government around the world, particularly in the developed north, will be monitoring the resolutions that will be taken at the BRICS summit because they are going to discuss very sensitive matters such as peace and security as you had and also the issue of uh, global trade and financial system and we are told that uh, member countries are going to adopt the resolution that uh, when they do business amongst themselves they are going to use their local currencies moving away from the dollar Others are even pushing that there should be a BRICS currency that cannot happen overnight. But the decision, if it's adopted, to move away from using a dollar when member states are trading amongst themselves, it will be a blow to the economies of the West, the powerful country like the United States of America. So the countries will be watching. But secondly, the Middle East question, they will be watching because I can assure you, you can see that those countries that are sympathetic to Palestine, most of them are members of BRICS, but secondly, those in the region uh, who, has, who have just joined will be there. I mean, the United Arab Emirates president arrived yesterday already, and you expect uh, countries such as Turkey to be there, and many others in the, in the Gulf region, in the Middle East, uh, as observers or as friends of BRICS. And I think there's going to be a resolution on, on, on Palestine. We saw what President Xi Jinping said said uh, in recent times in relation to that Middle East question. And this meeting comes at a time today, we saw a major story, India and China agreeing on issue of uh, the border that has caused tension between the two countries. And therefore you can see that the environment is going to be conducive in terms of leaders meeting with China and India having resolved this standoff and i think behind the scenes it was putin who was pushing that uh, these two countries find one another so that you have a very friendly atmosphere at uh, BRICS summit and i'm sure even our president uh, is going to have uh, quite a number of bilaterals there's no way he can't meet putin i can't see him not meeting xi jinping on the margins of this uh, summit so all eyes will be in russia
And of course, all eyes on the international news desk as well, uh, Sophie, because it's a busy week. Um, as you say, these many developing stories here. And of course, do trust the SABC to bring you all the very latest. That was the international news editor, Sophie Mukwana. We'll take a short break. When we come back, remember, we still have a conversation that's going to look at the issues around illegal firearms that have been proliferating the streets and the possible link with some of the mass shootings that we've been seeing.